Welcome back to Death's Cold Embrace, the fan mission for Thief 2. I am here at the Biltmore Apartments, where the inventor Mark Miller was apparently killed this morning. I have his, the key to his apartment, which we stole from the guards, uh, to the guard post down the street. And they've had reports of some weird thing. Kind of machine-like, kind of female-like, scary, we'll have to, have to figure out what it is. Oh, well, this is interesting. The front gate and the first apartment is number three, that's atypical. Crime scene, do not enter. By order of the city watch, no one is allowed on these premises due to an ongoing murder investigation. Well, I think you'll find that uh, that was not going to stop Garrett here. Well, let's check out the other problems first. They might have loot. Or burglars. Did he not see me? What the hell? He should have seen me. <coughs> Maybe he's actually friendly. I don't want to find out if it's friendly, it's safer not to ask. Generally, other thieves are not very happy to see me breaking in on their territory. But why is someone else in there? Where is he? I'm hearing someone in apartment 2 there as well. About, but he's not. Oh, just gotta get used to working side by side with women. Or running from women on the guard these days. Still. Oh, hello. He does not look healthy. Let's turn it off. Books scattered about, a scroll. Can't seem to pick it up. I can pick up the. Oh, turn the light off. Good. I can pick up the money. Pick up the scroll. Mr. Davidoff, sir! Mrs. Davidoff said you weren't in, but she let me leave you this note. I've been leaving the bottles on the sill like you asked me, but I've got a favour to ask. Begging your pardon, sir, but I was wondering if I could get an advance on the next few payments. I know it might not be the best timing for you, sir, but there's this ring I've been fancying for Jenny up at Sam's place, and I wanted to surprise her for her birthday. Sorry about this, sir, but times are hard right now. Maybe I could do some more work for you to make up for it. Again, sorry for the trouble. I'll be here for the next few bottles tomorrow. You can tell me then. Eight bottles of what? Nothing else here seems to be interactable. It's just clock words, nothing on. Oh, yeah, there's something up there. What's that? Loot. What's this about bottles on the windowsill? <laughs> What's this dramatic music that started? Oh, there's a back door here. Back gate. Okay. And a gas arrow. Where is this? Where's my compass? We're facing west. Uh, okay, we must be looking out over here, I guess. Where well, I did go down this road, yeah. Yeah, there's the alley over there where I uh, knocked out two people. I will explore this way later on. For the moment, I guess this is an alternative way in. I can't even pick up this body. Now I think I just heard the guard walk into the room. Ah, uh, not guard. Oh, that's the other thief. Yeah, there he is. I'll wait till he walks out again. Yeah, not close the door in my face. Close that door. It's funny they never noticed doors being opened and closed behind them. There he goes. Three upstairs. Yeah. So, they've been killing everyone, knocking one out. I'm not sure. 
Oh, off, off. When he comes back down, I will have a surprise for him. Ah, here he comes, packed. No? Oh, he's just wandering around, okay. What have we got? Jeez! Let's eat that. Oh, well, it didn't heal me. Sometimes food will heal a hit point or two. Plates, but they don't look valuable. No, they're not. Another body. A sink. Nothing on the cooktop, and it doesn't look like anything on the shelves that I can pick up. Unless... Nope. Just some bowls. <laughs> Yeah, definitely nothing of interest in this kitchen. Also, the windows don't open. What's this? Oh, hang on. What's that switch do? Ah, it turns off all the electricity. Because the lights in here no longer work. Nice. This fella's taking his time. you like to say hello to my friend, the Blackjack? <coughs> Indeed you would. The Dribian Codex, a novel by Yam Rantan. And that looks like loot. That looks like a body and a letter. What's the letter say? Boris, just as I thought, my fact-finding trip to the Blackbrook Seminary is a bust so far. I can't glean any new information in their laughably inadequate library, nor even a single reference to the Wailing Keep in their restricted section. Calm down, my dear Boris, I can imagine your face tightening from here. Trust me, I didn't get caught. You know my ways. I have searched every nook and cranny of this place and I haven't found anything of interest beyond a juicy scandal between the bookkeeper and Sir Pagan Hallett. Might come in handy if we ever need another favour. I, I do not like being this far from our investment. I've done what I can to stop the Hammers from investigating that apartment, but it's hard to keep the pressure on when I'm not there to give the stink eye. The sooner we get it out of there, the better. The landlord is at his wit's end, and I don't trust that zombie you hired to haunt the place. What if he breaks into the chest and finds it? He might decide that your generous salary of rotka isn't cutting it and pawn it off. It might get destroyed, or worse, Francesco. The mere thought of that amateur getting his grubby little rat claws on our hard work is more than I can bear. I'll be returning to the city in a few weeks, so I've got to check a few more leads. I realise our usual team might not be available, but we should assemble our expedition to the Wailing Keep the moment I get back, and no later. Clara. P.S. I know you're too proud to admit it, but I could sense your fear when I mentioned the castle's alleged curse. Surely a learned man such as David of the Great wouldn't give pause to such primitive ravings. Alright, so the uh, other apartment with the doubly locked chest that we could not open uh, yeah. relates somehow to... <clears throat> Maybe these people, I don't know why they keep falling through the beds, but okay. Either these people, or at least very much to Clara's letter to Boris. Uh, stop the hammers investigating the department. Uh, don't trust the zombie you hired to haunt the place. That was the guy making the zombie sounds that I knocked out. And what if he breaks into the chest? So they've got something. And there's an alleged curse. So probably whenever we manage to find what's in that chest, we will also find something bad. Oh, hello. Sneaky little secret. I don't know. Masters of the Brush. Hidden Secrets of Archaeology by Boris Davidoff. It's not not a lever, apparently. It is uh, merely a book. Well, that's... Uh... Alright, well played there. A Journeyman's Guide to Archaeology by Sir Milton Ives. Archaeology 101 by Sir Milton Ives. Yeah, normally, normally when uh, there's books that are probable in the bookcases is uh, secrets, but uh, I guess they thought they would try something different. It's through here. It's a very well locked room. Nothing on the coat pegs. Alright, this is a study of some kind. 
Well, I turned all the uh, lights off, but now... Let me just... Now that I've dealt with the two uh, people, I guess... They, no, this, they must be breaking into Boris's house, because we saw... I guess that must be... Boris. And his servant or something here. Anyway, let's turn the electric back on. So that we can have some lights on. We can see what we're doing a little easier, and there's no one to interrupt us. Another bookshelf, no more archaeological secrets, okay. There's a waste paper basket with... No. <gasps> Nothing in it. Can't pick up the... can't pick up the note, okay. A book! January 13th. I had to open a new crate for Will. Down to the last one now. Need to remind Edith to order more soon, or I'll have to start pulling from my own reserve. I really don't want to do that. Once he tastes Pharaoh's brew, he won't be interested in the usual porridge piss. Clara continues to press me about the expedition, and she's becoming more difficult to deflect. I've already explained the folly of trying to pass in the heart of winter. But even if we could get through, does she honestly expect me to work in that frozen hell at my age? It's an outrage. My young Clara, her wits are as sharp as a blade, but she doesn't seem to understand that my body just isn't as resilient to the frost as it once was. She has tried every trick in the book to get me to crack, but as she says, I know her ways. Has she remembered nothing of what I've taught her over the years? Archaeology isn't done by some lumbering jack with pickaxe, it is a canvas reserved only for the patient scholar, an artist who carefully paints the dust away with his brush, revealing the secrets of the ancients. Save for memoirs. Speaking of ancients, I am now fully convinced that the Wailing Keep, while a Seralian structure, is built on a Drimian site, and the Seralians are known to be adept at reusing precursor technology. I have compared the castle's geographical location to the maps found in Faust's Compendium of Ancient Civilizations, and although it doesn't lie directly in known Drimian territory, it is very close to the hypothesized border, which would explain the function of such a heavily fortified building. There is also the keystone. Though it has no discernible writing etched onto the surface, besides a relief which vaguely resembles the Drimian symbol for gate, it was not uncommon for the Drimi to use devices such as this, and the Seralians no doubt reused it. Still, nothing more about the supposed curse beyond the writings of Thaddeus. I've seen the old priest several times, but he still maintains the idea. Clara laughs at me, of course. I'm not a superstitious man, but I am a careful one. You don't go on as many journeys as I without coming away with some measure of respect for the local traditions. There's often something to them, no matter how absurd. I don't see why she worries so about Frank Francesco. He is no scholar. The Drimi were an extremely intelligent people, and most of their knowledge is guarded by all sorts of devious traps that would require specialized knowledge to bypass. Knowledge that only someone like myself would have access to. And, after all, they don't call me Davidov the Great for nothing. Well, uh, Davidov, uh, you're not so great anymore. Creation Sundered, Precursors, Ancient Trivia, and The Great Calamity by Sir Milton Ives. Any other books? Yes, a bunch of books. Across the Vast Ether, The Story of the Drimi by Boris Davidov. Compendium of Ancient Civilizations by Bartholomew Faust. And there's one over there. There's two over here. The Hidden Gate, an exposition of Drimian Scroll number 138 by Boris Davidov. The Curse of the Wailing Keep by Brother Thaddeus. Oh, and one in the middle. No, two in the middle. Oh, no, it's the wall. As you see, the wall between the cracks in the books. Nothing behind the door? No. Alright, there is a safe. This is really my business, not archaeology, although... All this foreshadowing suggests that maybe I will be have to make an expedition to that keep. Hopefully not. We'll find out. Oh, that's a lot of complexity in the lock. Alright, what do we have? Some more gold. Total of 1,235 out of the required 6,000. Yikes. Alright, have we been here? We've seen that. We have not been here. That's a bathroom. A hand mirror. That's kind of useless. Bathtub, nothing in it. A very modern toilet and some reading material. Archaeology today. Can I pull the chain? Nope, I cannot pull the chain. But that is an exceedingly modern toilet. Right, I think we're done with the upstairs here. That's a book that does not, cannot be read. 
Вот. Окей, so we have made our way into the apartments. We found this very noisy there. Shut up. Thank you. Uh, well, oh, there's a nice mask. That's valuable. Is that pot? No. We are still being sidetracked by loot, obviously. A good sidetrack. But uh, by these second apartments, before we go into the one that is actually our objective, I figure I might as well try and collect what loot I can, such as this and these. And this. I don't think I've emptied this room already. Yeah. We know there's another back way in here, which is, might be useful for escape if there wasn't bloody chairs in the way. Now let's just switch the light off in here in case we need a dark room to hide in. Right, that's apartment one. Apartment three is our objective, but let's check apartment two. I did hear somebody here earlier, I think. Yes. And it's locked. Oh, that's uh, quite different inside. Who did I hear wandering about in here? Yeah, there's more electric lights. Is there a light switch? There is. Ah, much better. I hear footsteps. Hello there. Is that a sword you have? He dropped it. I have an odd ornate key. That's interesting. So why were you carry walking around your house carrying a sword? That's very unusual. You can sleep there. It's a very noisy sword. I can't pick it up. Okay. No other signs of footsteps. What is in your kitchen? Very, very cheap plates. Once again, a hatch controlling all the electrics for the house, I guess. I guess. I'll leave it open, but I won't uh, turn them off. Because I can't hear anybody else in here. Sink, light switch. Well, let's just grab the lights here. It's light enough in this room, I think. Any loot there is. Gold cups. Painting, which is not valuable. More bookshelves. Any books to read? Nope. Table to get stuck on. And an upstairs. Hello? Anyone up here? Oh, dramatic music again. What's your book say? January 8th. I simply cannot abide this old fool's incessant hand ringing a moment longer. The bumpy carriage ride home added insult to injury as I read through that condescending letter again and again. Yes, yes, the brush. When a salivating vulture like Francesco is about to swoop in, there isn't time for such luxury. Does he honestly believe that a knuckle-dragging imbecile like Francesco is even in possession of such a notion? I wish it could be done another way, but the truth is, if we don't use the shovel here, then our adversary will. Furthermore, if a shovel must be used, would it not make much more sense that it's left in our more capable hands? If he will not see the logic in this, then I'm afraid he'll leave me no choice. Miller was murdered. I noticed his door was slightly ajar this morning on my way out and found him bled out on the floor. It looked like he'd be stab been stabbed a few times. I've scarcely seen him leave his place over the past few months. Perhaps he was laying low and hiding from someone. I know he wasn't ex eccentric, but he was usually pretty friendly. It's hard to believe anyone would wish him serious harm. I very nearly investigated his apartment more, but... Well, there were some pretty strange sounds coming up out of the basement that didn't seem like they'd be very good for my health. So I got out of there quickly and reported it. Oh well. It's in the watch's hands now, and I have more important things to focus on. Jacobson came through. I've instructed his goons not to seriously harm Davidoff or his wife, 
and to take nothing but the key. I even showed them mine, since it's virtually identical. I never wanted to do this, but I know Francesco has his beady little eyes on us, and if he finds out about Davidoff's trap, then the keystone is as good as gone. They're going tomorrow night around 10pm. No matter what happens, I'll get my way. If Jacob says his men bring me the key, I can tell Davidoff I rescued it from the intruders and blame Francesco. I should then be able to convince him that we cannot afford to wait any longer. If the men cannot find the key, I'll still blame Francesco and the outcome is the same. But I should learn to properly utilise my ample intelligence. January 13th. I can't sleep a wink. I hid by the Fairbanks place and watched Jacob's, Jacobson's men enter Davidoff's study window, but that was some time ago. I haven't heard any commotion, not a single sound. I can only assume that means Boris is sound asleep when they're still looking. Not bad for goons. What in the hell is taking so long? Would they dare cross me? Surely not. They have only one of the two required keys and its twin is safely on my belt. My three dayport fencing championship trophies should dissuade them from desiring a tangle with my saber. Alright, so that was Clara. And the key we stole from her is one of the two. Where is it? An odd or night key. One of the two we need for the uh, zombie apartment. And those thieves had broken in at her request. Walk This Way, An Introduction to Feminine Wilds by C.H. Wigglesworth. Those thieves had broken in uh, at her request to steal the other key from Boris. So I'm guessing we need to go back to Boris's apartment and look a little bit harder to find the second ornate key, because I only have the one. Yeah, definitely only the one. Which I just took off her belt. There's her uh, Clara Hollingsworth, Grandmaster Saber. Well, it's a good thing I hit her with a blackjack before she got her saber out. Clara, you wound me. The postponing of our next expedition has nothing to do with some irrational superstition. You should know me better than that. I simply think it wisest to wait for the Thor. Grandpa's pass is drifted shut like as not, and trying to get a full team out there would be suicide. Presuming we made it through the pass and into the castle, what then? The freezing wind and sub-zero temperatures would be a major distraction, to say the least, if they didn't kill us outright. There is also the lives of our loyal diggers to take into account. If we were so careless with their lives, we might not have any future expeditions at all without substantial delay. Do not labour under the delusion that this expedition is unimportant to me. Ancient languages with special emphasis on the Drimia was the subject of my dissertation, after all, and I am the current authority on the subject. Uncovering more knowledge of this fascinating culture is undoubtedly the greatest continuing work of my life, and I do not take it lightly. I am also not comfortable hiring new diggers. As you know, it takes years of training to acquire the skills needed. I am not willing to allow years of careful research to be ruined because some half-fisted adult swung a pick too hard. The brush, not the shovel, my dear. Boris. P.S. Leave the tramp to me. He wouldn't dare betray us. We both have our ways. And more letters aren't readable, a safe, and some more books. We have Red Post by Simon Cantwell. Loot Jump Run by Kara L. Roft. No idea what that might be referenced to. On Guard by Simon Cantwell. Alright. And a valuable vase. We're 1970 gold. Let's pick the lock of the safe. Not the world's most engaging lockpicking game, but uh, when you have guards patrolling around, it's a lot more uh, tense. That's a fancy mask. Alright, I think we have got everything from Clara. What was her name? No, Clara Elroft. No, this is not the same person. This is Clara, I think. Either way, that's noisy out there. Archaeologist hiding the keystone. Ah, oh, there's a window that opens. Hiding the keystone to an important uh, archaeological discovery. <laughs> In the other apartments across the street. Oh, where does this take us? Somewhere precarious. <coughs> yeah, I don't think I want to go down there yet. No will. Guess it was nothing. This time. <coughs> you heard that? 
I'm not sure he knows the way in here. I hope he doesn't know the way in here. So I thought I just saw some loot. No? No, it's not loot. Yeah, the guard doesn't know the way here. Alright, okay, so back to apartment one. Boris's place. We need to find his key. Now they've ransacked his study here, but surely it's the most likely place for his, his only key to be hidden. <sighs> yeah, nothing. Might be a secret now. What was the deal with him handing bottles out to that guy? Uh, no, the other guy bringing bottles here. No? I... No, I don't know. I don't understand what the deal with this fellow in the bottles is. But, there's a key. We need a key. That's not a key. Is there a key hiding on this bookshelf? Does not appear to be so. There was some loot on top, but no key on top. Not hiding anywhere, like on top of the door. Or under the desk. Now let's try it upstairs. We'll come back to this room, but let's try the upstairs first. So here's also another study, which is another likely place to hide a key. <laughs> Nothing on top of the bookshelf or the window. There is this letter th thrown in the trash here, but I can't actually pick it up. There was this uh, safe, which you would think might be where he hides the key, but there was no sign of a key there. And apart from that, it's just these bookshelves. <sighs> Get on the desk! Get on the desk! <laughs> well, there's no, it doesn't seem to be like a key hidden among the books or anything. I wonder where this key is hiding. I feel like... Oh, hello, hello. What have we got there? That looks like another odd ornate key. Well done. Two odd ornate keys. Alright. Well hidden, sir. Okay, I was about to say, I feel like we are going to need to access that chest somehow for the story because it's been so heavily played up. Uh, I don't need to go there. And now we can. So, perhaps I should get the keystone, now that I have the two keys. Oh dear. And face this music again. Uh, now that I have the two keys, I should get the keystone. from this very, very haunted apartment with some person wandering around making zombie noises while carrying a frying pan to water for intruders. One. Where's another key? Two. What do we have here? It is a curious keystone and we have new objectives. Let's see what they are. Nice finds! Normally such a piece wouldn't have much market value, but you can probably sell it back to Boris for a pretty penny. He and Clara will no, no doubt be glad to have it back. Bonus objective. Alright, so it doesn't relate to the story, it's just a nice bonus objective to find. Great! Oh, we found it. So there we are. Now, can I get back on this rope without killing myself with the drop again? I really don't know. Yep. <coughs> Whatever, I'm not dead yet. It'll be fine. It probably won't be fine. I'll probably need that health. However, quick check at the map. So we've kind of explored most of this area. There's... We haven't been to the Baker or the Luxury Apparel or Fairbanks Manor. Um, we have been to these two places. 
Um, we haven't been in the north here to any of this area. But we can do that later. We do have to get to meet and I'll contact at the Trickster's Tail without being seen by anybody there, importantly. But I do believe we can do that. We can explore this area at the point we have to go there. We're going to have to find more money, so we're going to have to loot as many places as we can just to get just to reach the loot goal. Now, the gate that I saw, I guess this must be Clara's apartment, and we were climbing out here because we could see a gate, and it must be the north gate here. So, our mission objective. Explore the apartment here. Well, they weren't wrong about the strange noises. Is that coming from the apartment? I don't know, it's suitably creepy anyway. So he has a lift that goes down to the basement and the first floor. Oh wow, this, this ambient sound is uh, very creepy, I like it. I'm already creeped out. We have bookshelves, we have loot. So, oh, this must be where he got killed. More loot. Whoever did the deed was not after his money. Oh, he's got a lovely silver fire poker. He has a book which we can't read. Anything in here? It must be. Very creepy sounds. Something odd creeping around down there. Ah, valuable bottle. Nothing else of value up there, it looks like. Nothing else in the kitchen. So... I am creeped out. For the sounds. I guess I'm going to try going upstairs. Oh. No, I'm not. The lift is inoperative. This would be a good time for a uh, moss arrow if I had one, but I don't, so let's get off the lift. Let us stick a rope arrow in the roof. Let's see if there's anything upstairs. Flowers, painting, or lift controls. August 29th. At last, a stroke of luck. Brody sent for me today. He has recovered the body of a young woman that has remained unidentified for several days now, and, by his description, will likely remain that way. The location she was found, as well as her malnourished and generally unkempt appearance, indicates that she was likely homeless. I will visit Brody tomorrow to find out if this girl will suit my requirements. Of course, it's difficult to tell at this point. Nothing like this has ever been done before. August 30th. The girl is just as Brody said. She is dirty, half-starved, and her hair is a matted nest. But as I look upon her, it is clear that she was once quite attractive. If I believed in fate, I'd say she was a cruel mistress. Brody required a small fee, of course. It pains me to have to stoop to the level of dealing with such a crooked mortician, but where could I obtain a willing volunteer? I do not delight in her death, but I am thankful for it. Desecration of the dead is a heretical offence, but the path of the true scientist is not an easy one. Our desire to push the boundaries of society for the benefit of the future is a double-edged sword, both a blessing and a curse. August 31st. It's a shame the girl wasn't delivered to Brody's in a more timely manner. The rust has already begun to set in and much of her flesh is unusable. 
I've got her on ice to slow the decay until I can hook her up to the fluid exchange terminal, but I keep finding myself in a habit of procrastination. While I am truly gripped with excitement for the task at hand, I cannot help but feel a sense of dread deep down, a persistent nagging voice that insists I am treading where no man has any right. My flirtation with the teachings of the Hammerites in early life and their prominent role in society at large is surely to blame. I have to remind myself that, that I set all that aside. I have exchanged primitive superstition for rationality. The delusion of our morality is a mere stumbling block, a crooked root in the path of the ever straining giant of progress. I shall remove it from my own path this very night. Work begins tomorrow. September 1st. It has been a productive day. Fluid exchange has begun without a hitch and I've even managed to remove the majority of necrotic tissue. I'm pleased to report that my scalpel hovered for only a brief moment of hesitation this morning. My thoughts are now unclouded. It's unfortunate that much of the decay was present on her face. I'm afraid its removal has robbed her of her former beauty and she is now quite ghastly to look upon. I suppose I can fashion some sort of mask for her, but I'm not concerned for the moment. Function before aesthetics, at least for now. If I am to eventually sell my creations, they must appeal to the eye as well. September 28th. I realize it's been weeks since my last entry, but progress has really taken off and in my excitement I've scarcely found time to eat, much less write. Delilah, as I've come to call her, opened her eyes for the first time today. The pupils are dilated and she has no mind to perceive anything with as, yet, as of yet. But the difference is still astounding. I managed to cover the rent for this month, but my stock of le leftover mechanist materials is beginning to wane. I'm going to need to find a way to secure more funding before too long. I can't exactly ask the hammers or mechanists for help with corpse reanimation. Perhaps I can sell some of my work. Maybe Brody can make some inquiries into the black market for me. It seems a cruel joke that I've developed a formula for synthetic emeralds, but lack the machinery to put it to use. All my funding troubles would be a thing of the past. October 12th. I really need to get better at keeping this thing up to date. I'd hate to rely on memory alone for the inevitable book. Even after many precious hours with the scalpel, I failed to extract the last trace amounts of necrotic tissue. I have, however, isolated it completely to her legs. Delilah is just a prototype, and since a house servant should not have such a hideous smell, I have opted to remove her legs completely and will replace them with much stronger and more sanitary metallic ones. Tomorrow the real work begins. Delilah needs a mind. Through all of this, I can't help but recall my youthful fascination with that old myth of the golem. It was my dream to one day build one, and though Delilah is not made from clay, she is not altogether unlike one. I simply couldn't resist stuffing the old scrap of paper I ripped from that forbidden tome into Delilah's mouth. Purely symbolic, of course. It is science, not magical incantations, that will bring Delilah back from the dead. December 15th. I have done it! Delilah lives! Well, not quite. She can only do what I've programmed her to do, but that's the idea anyway. She cannot speak as of yet. Her vocal cords were almost completely destroyed by necrosis. I will begin work on a synthetic voice soon. The ragged, wet, gasping noises she keeps making simply won't do. I've also had to replace much of her hands with steel and cable. I'm going to need to recalibrate her grip parameters as soon as possible, as evidenced by the handshake experiment. Note to self, see doctor about fractured metacarpals. January 10th. Last night I had the strangest dream. It seemed to me that I suddenly woke to a soft mewling sound. To my horror, there was Delilah at the foot of my bed. She looked different. Eyes that were usually vacant and glazed over were now awake and alert with a terrible pleading. Her mouth opened and shrieks of wet nonsense spewed forth in hideous glossolalia. The inside of my head felt like a smashed piano and I passed into sheer white panic. Next thing I knew, my room was empty. I quickly confirmed that she was indeed still in the basement, gazing at me dumbly as she continued the waitress program on loop. Only a dream then. Still, now that I've given life to her legs with several locomotion routines, I'm going to need to make sure she stays in the basement. As a precaution, I've now rigged the lift buttons to an additional circuit, and installed a control lever so I can disable access to the lift entirely. I can't risk any guests seeing her. One look and they'd probably faint. It was a dream. I will be programming her security room today. I'll need to find something to test it on, perhaps one of Miss Tibbs' many cats? Also, Brody's found me a buyer. Apparently a nobleman from Oldale named Lord Highwater is interested in my formula and is willing to pay much higher than I'd ever expected to receive for it. His man is bringing the payment tomorrow night. I'd rather not pay part with any of my work, but I do need more funds to perfect Delilah. Emeralds are nothing compared to what I'm about to create. January 12th. My god, what have I done? I went down this morning to collect last night's reels, but she attacked me. She cut my arm wide open with a single flick of her finger. She then immediately began to try and bandage me up. 
As soon as my arm was wrapped, she tried to attack me again, but I managed to short-circuit her with a glass of water and made my escape. Now, whenever I peer down the elevator shaft, she's there, staring up at me and issuing those disgusting wet gags, just waiting for me to come down so she can mangle me like as not. For a minute, I thought I could see a glimmer of malice in her eyes, but that's not possible. It was a dream! What did I do wrong? It seems like I must have accidentally activated several of her routines before I left last night, and now she's stuck in a very unfortunate combination. At least I know the security routine works, technically. The reels confirm my suspicions. She is indeed stuck in at least three routines. Nurse, waitress, and guard. I also couldn't help but notice a few really strange additions to the reels that are not part of the programming. It's almost as if... But no, that's impossible. I cannot go there. I need to find a way to deactivate her guard routine, at the very least, before I can safely continue my work. Perhaps if I could lure her into some sort of sprinkler system it would give me ample time to make the adjustments. I'd better get this thing nipped in the bud before Highwater's man arrives tonight. I think I've got a copy of the formula up here, but if not, I'll need to write another and my notes are in the basement safe. Well, long-winded diaries again, uh, but uh, it tells us a lot. It tells us that Delilah, in the basement there, is uh, a reanimated, partly robotified uh, corpse that I should be able to use water to deactivate her at least temporarily and something about reels that can be switched around to change her behavior patterns so maybe I can get her into out of guard mode out of uh, what was the other one he said so, really the last page Uh, the, wow, there's too many here. Uh, uh, nurse, waitress, and guard. Well, waitress sounds alright if she's bringing me food, but if I get her out of guard mode, then maybe in nurse mode she'll patch me up, you know? I could do with some healing. But even if not, if she's not in guard mode, she shouldn't attack. Although, the last note suggested that uh, she's been reprogramming herself, so, you know, probably I'm not going to be able to deactivate her that simply. What does this note say? Begin routine, optics 01, calibrating. I1 online, I2 online, calibration complete. I see you. Begin routine, audio 01, calibrating. Ear 1 online, ear 2 online, calibration complete. Life in stereo. Begin routine, this room 01, calibrating spatial reasoning. Object 1 table, object 2 chair, object 3 chair, calibration complete. Hello world. Begin routine, waitress, calibrating. Unknown command. Ah! Unknown sequence. Ah! Bad input. Uh, critical failure. Restarting sequence. Okay, some debug logging there. It's, uh, obviously trying to take her problematic vocalizations as input. Which really has not worked. Now, what's this picture up here? Relevant, I guess. That's what he's trying to make. I'm guessing that's the control lever for the lift. Oh dear. Oh, it brings it up here. Alright, so I don't need my rope anymore, right? I suppose. We'll have to worry about the basement in a minute. Well, let's check the rest of the upstairs here. What's this? Another routine, loco one, legs, walking left, right, left, right, waitress, cup, bottle, empty, arms, paw, more problems, pain, so loud, help, yeah, there's, uh, maybe she's not quite as dead as you thought she was, well, she was rotting, so, uh, oh look, a water arrow, how handy, so almost certainly need that to, deal with this uh, Delilah. Uh, nothing, nothing there. More loot. Another note. Nurse routine. Object one master. Injured equals false. Hey, let me sleep. Why? God. 
Uh, all this are the logs from when she was going between all of them. Yeah. Hate. Squeeze. Mastery comes true. Mastery comes true. Mastery comes true. Master equals false. Calibrating arms. So, she murdered him. She, in her guard routine, concluded that he was no longer the master. Oh, there's some odd behavior with the textures there. Eh. Disoriented. Right. That window doesn't open. I think we're done with the upstairs. Now... Okay, that brings it to the top and that brings it... Down one level, I guess. Time... To check the basement. Oh, uh, look, there she is. She doesn't sound happy. At all. She does sound creepy. I guess it's not her fault. Alright, uh, I seem to have got myself wedged in the corner here. Alright, let's bring the lift back. So, it doesn't look like she will be at the lift immediately, but it should probably be prepared just in case. So let us have the water arrows at the ready. Dark down here. And the fog makes it nearly impossible to see. So she was walking up and down there a minute ago. There she is. Hello, Delilah. What's her patrol like? Well, her strange noises are very hard to localize. But I don't think she comes here, into this room. Maybe, maybe she does. <gasps> She's angry. Very much a system shock two nurse, isn't it? Ah! Well, she's not actually dead, so maybe she can't actually die. This might be a bad idea. Ouch! Stop it, Lila! That's not very nice of you. All right. Well. Uh, that is not the right approach. I mean, it does say don't kill anyone tonight, but technically she's already dead, so I wasn't killing anyone, really. So, avoidance, I think, is the key, and water arrows if I can't escape her. But I'll try to avoid her. Which probably means staying kind of behind her. Ooh, there's a guard that's down here that's dead. Is he one of the the watch that we're trying to Well 
Oh, there's fog. Makes it nearly impossible to see. I'm stuck. Ow. Not fair, I was stuck. So she heard some noises in here and turned on the lights. That was interesting. Now where am I? So I'm guessing that's kind of where I've got to go. This place is disorienting. turns the lights on just when she goes in there. So I can hear some kind of repeating noise there. It's like, uh... Sounds like a uh, fire or something. Where's Delilah going? I'm actually coming back. I don't know that I have any opportunity to actually uh, stop her permanently, but um, water arrows at least will get me out of trouble in a pinch. She's going out the other door. No, she's not. Uh, water! Save me! Loot, save me. Loot, let's be quick here. Uh, this door. She didn't see me. That's good. Oh, oh. She didn't see me. What is this his workshop? I cannot see a damn thing. Now I'm lost again. Oh dear. A key. Miller's key. What's it? What's it? The key to? Uh. Oh, oh, no! 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 Water! Water arrow! Thank you. God damn it! Let me get back out of here. I am so lost. Oh, money! Oh no, fruit! Back at the start, but I cannot see a bloody thing. There's, I've got a key to a safe. Uh, I'm guessing somewhere 
uh, in that safe is what I need, the uh, formula for the emeralds. Now, nine water arrows left, that, oops, that's plenty, let's save here. Problem is, where is the safe? Uh, I'm getting freaked out by having to deal with this creature. But I guess the good news is I don't need to go in that tile floor room anymore, as far as I can tell. So if I give Delilah a few minutes to settle down, we should be okay to uh, hunt for the safe carefully. I'm just going to do a quick test here. Put some fog off. Nah, there's still... That's not actual fog, that's just sprite fog. Yeah. Oh, it does actually make a difference in the, in the distance. They are using the fog here. That's all these foggy sprites. Dear God, man, why would you have such a crazy basement full of murderous robot woman? Uh, yeah, so definitely seems a reference to the, uh, the, what were they called? The kind of nurse robot things from System Shock 2. Especially with the nurse mode. General appearance as well. Half robot, half woman. But much creepier sounding. Yeah. Right, she settled down. It is time to see. If we can find any kind of safe. Oh wait, this is a bad place to stand because she comes back that way. Yes, she does. What the hell is that? However, I see a safe. I also see another creature in a green circle that is also creeping me out rather a bit. Made of metal too. Something sparking down there. Oh, it looks like the uh, golden child from Thief 2. Alright, here, this must be the safe. Ah. Oh, ow, what the hell? Ah! Ah! Ow, my, what? Ouch. Okay, so, trap. Trap, good thing I did save just before, because I kind of suspected it looked dangerous. So what? Find something inside Miller's workshop. Well, I'm in the workshop. How do I defeat this trap? How do I disable this trap? There's a wire coming from the safe. It goes to a joint there. It comes down to this fellow. It also goes to this, but this doesn't have any kind of switch that I can see. Oh, it's dark. There's no switch there. Just says high voltage. That's sparking. Can I? I can. Okay. I can disable the trap. Question is, does that alert Delilah? What's the noise? There's no real dark corners to hide in either. I can't hear her. So I'm going to assume it's safe to now open the safe. Finally, it's money. Take his research. This should be useful, Fairbanks. 
Now to go get paid. Okay, she reads his research notes. This does not look like synthetic emeralds. But I guess that's maybe a different page. I don't want to stay down here another minute. Quite right. Shall I just make a run for it? I should just make a run for it. Okay, so I think we have, unless she's particularly wily and has managed to come upstairs, I think we've managed to deal with Delilah and Miller's apartment. And we should be free to go back to the trickster's tail to get our payments, uh, but not be seen by anybody inside there before. And we still have a lot of loot to collect, so... We will go to the north. Oops. Back through all this snow. I guess I could have gone out the back door of the uh, bump, but never mind. It's not far to come. It's just around this corner. It's our alley of... Whoa! Yeah, hello. I didn't realize there were still guards around. Let alone... So dead, pal. Not really. I hope not. He's, he's eager to uh, slice out in it. It's a good thing I kept the back door open in here. <laughs> yeah, there's a guard right there, okay. So that was the alley just down there where we encountered him, so uh, he'll be back that way at some point. So we shouldn't get too cocky here. Oh, but I've been here before and uh, knocked someone out. So where are we now? This is the Fairbanks Manor that we're standing in front of, I think. Yeah, we're on, we're on Maple Road here. So we can go around there, that's the pub we need to get to. There may be loot in Fairbanks Manor, it seems worth investigating. There's nothing in the basement. But we do here have gates guarded. A front door that's guarded. Looks like it might be openable. <clears throat> Guard is not paying too much attention. Wonder. It's too high. Well, I didn't hear that. Hey! Uh, hold it right yeah, there! No, 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 Don't hit me. I'll see your bones! Ouch. You've already hit me with your sword once. You've messed with the wrong man, thief! Yep. That's it! You've had it! Hello again, guys. I'm running around. Let's do the same rigmarole. I'm really losing a lot of health here. This is, uh, you know, normally I would probably quick load at that, but I feel like if I'm actually streaming, I should be a little more, uh, you know, just let things play out the way they should play out. <laughs> so, good news, he's left his front door unguarded. I wonder why. Uh, but it doesn't even open. That window doesn't open. Uh, nothing here. All right, well, that was a waste of time. But good news is I know that there's nothing at the Fairbanks Manor to worry about. What do we got here? The Dayport Lighting. And this is the North Gate where I saw another guard. That must be the one that we found in the alley to the south. This door, this door does open. Feeling a bit exposed here, so I keep looking behind me to see if the guards are in the distance.
Wow, it's a light, lightning, lighting shop. Not lightning. Gold candlesticks. Their uh, light fittings are not really the most exciting, but if there's some value in them, I will take it. Yeah, probably leave the lights off. The door's open. What's behind the counter? Is that a... Is that okay? What's the book say? December 14th. Sold two birdhouse lights, 180 gold. Sold glass lamp, red rose, 40 gold. 15th. Sold green leaf glass lamp, 25 gold. Blah, 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 blah. Received in the two of the king's ransom pedestal light. Paid 1,600 gold. That's not good. Well, he sold one of them for 1,200 gold. Paid the guardsman 5 gold to ensure it arrived safely. But one of them... Might still be here. Oh, received three Serena chandeliers. 600 gold. Paid Gasma for favor. 10 gold. Interesting. Oh. Money. Money. And uh, what is this? Oh, it's a lift. Okay, we'll have to check that in a minute. Might actually just turn the lights on. And shut the door. So we have here oh, more light fittings, torches, lamps, nothing that seems to be usable. Chandelier, more lamps in a stunning variety of decorations. So yeah, nothing else there. Let's check out this lift. Oh, there's a ring. Uh -huh. Always look under the lift. Although I guess I didn't... I didn't look under the lift in the basement um, of, the, of Miller's place, but uh, it was a bit too creepy down there. So what's in his upstairs room? Anyone? Anything? Surprisingly empty. Is it one of the book? On the Shoulders of Giants, The Davidov Hollingworth Deception by Francesco Hawking. Is, Frances is this Francesco's place? Well, he's got another bookshelf, but I can't climb on that one. There's a few books to read. Kevil's got six mums. How to talk to your child about polygamy. Uh, right. A book. December 15th, finally finished making a half dozen of the birdhouse wall lights. They are selling really well, particularly with the ladies. No wonder, it looks like a little golden birdhouse full of light. December 16th, received in the King's Ransom pedestal light. What a work of art. It holds four candles and stands tall than I do. It has actual gemstones in it, as if the rest of it weren't pretty enough. It goes very well with the ceiling chandelier by the same artist. That chandelier holds six candles and looks like crowns welded together. 18th. Received in four of the electric brass table lamps, one each of purple, blue, green, and red. 20th. The stained glass lamps are selling very well. People seem to prefer the brighter colored ones, red rose, peacock, orchids, but the Camilla and ice chip versions also do very well. Sold the Tsarina chandelier to Lady Rumford. She wants two more, which are on order. It's no surprise, she is too old-fashioned to update her home with electrical gas. However, I cannot fault her taste. The ceiling chandelier holds ten candles and has beautiful golden fretwork. January 6th. It has been quiet lately. Most of the town must be out on a winter holiday. January 8th. The Serena chandelier has arrived today. I sent two over to Lady R and installed the third back in the showroom. It is a beautiful piece. January 9th. I caught one of the customers trying to pry one of the gems off of the King's Ransom pedestal light. The guardsman didn't go easy on him and broke his arm. Still, it's not like he will need it where he's going. January 10th. Gah! Once the last of the plain gold candlesticks sell, I am never ordering or making another one. They are so ordinary, the staff just steal them, knowing they can never be identified. Then the owners buy them back from the pawn shop cheaper than I can sell them here. Those things just lose me money. Polished brass looks just as good and doesn't disappear nearly as often. January 12th. Sold two more pair of the polished brass candlesticks. Everyone likes beautiful golden candlesticks without the cost of the gold. Safe. Loot. No. Oh, I can't pick the lock. Was there a key? Did I find a key? Let's just check. No, I do not have a key. Where are you hiding your key, good sir? On your desk? No, in your wastebasket? No, behind your... 
painting does not appear to be so. I put behind the pot plant like last time. Yes! Ah! You're not as cunning as you look. We have loot, loot, and more loot. 3,400 so far. That's a little more than halfway to our goal of 6,000. Alright, more lights on. Nobody's going to suspect the place is being robbed if all the lights are on, are they? After all, who would rob a place with the lights on? That's just meaningless. However, he was talking about gems on the... Uh, this thing, I believe. Are there gems here that I can steal? Yes? No? It, it looks like it. But no? Are you going to tell me you put all that about gems in the candlestick and I can't actually get them? I'm disappointed. Also, that was really loud. Those are just torches. What's this? Oh, money. Ah, okay, somebody's careless with their coins. Here's the massive uh, chandelier. Oh, no, that's, that's the fancy one, I see. Yeah, very nice. Well, I don't know. They're both very nice. But not of any worth to me. Uh, so I think I'm done here. Rob is safe. I've got some money from him. Let's turn out the lights. Uh, no guards in sight. Oops. Oh yes, and that's where I came out earlier. Out, out the window up there. Alright. So this is the pub we need to be in, but we need to not be seen before the meeting. So what does that mean? Do I need to get in and Without being seen entirely? Is that a guard? Is somebody quite drunk? No, not a guard. Also, <coughs> not a problem. Where's the dark corner? Here we'll do. Hey, hello, there's a guard around. Walking on a wooden floor. And carpet. No, maybe not a guard. Where are we? Uh, this is Linda's Luxury Apparel. I'm the baker down here as well. Is this the baker? Uh huh. This door is locked. Oh, I came here before. That's right. <laughs> I came up here running from a guard and didn't stop to investigate what was in this courtyard. It's the back door to the baker, no doubt. <laughs> which is which is inaccessible from the front. Okay. Oh, it's dark in here. Can we turn the lights on? I can. This is the ovens. And a ton of bread, but not a single loaf <laughs> usable. <laughs> the ovens also don't open. I'm not certain of the purpose of this room, but uh, it seems kind of pointless. Nice music you got in the bakery, though. Or is that just ambient? <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's some guards. Let's pick them up. Just looking at the time. It's been about an hour already, but I'm almost done. Whoops! Almost done with this mission. Good. There you go. Thank you. So I will. I think I'll just finish. Oh, his electricity doesn't work. Finish this section and find out. Uh, shouldn't take long to collect the extra loot, I hope. Uh, he's got a bunch of money. I should steal it. It's a very quick determination. Ah, bread! Yum! Got me some uh, health back. He has an upstairs. More loaves that I can't interact with. And a box that I can pick up. There's nothing behind it. Okay, go back there. A money box. Okay, we're on 3,500. Nothing behind the counter here. Once again, it's very dark. But 
to that. Ah, oh, that's the back door, alright. Oh, I tried. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, that, that must be the door lock at the front there. Oh, we don't need lights on. Ladders! No, oh, save, just in case. Let's climb up the ladder. What did you go upstairs? Fireplace, another book. Sales are down a lot this winter and I can't figure out why. My bread and pastries are as good as ever and I've even lowered my prices a bit, but it's not helped yet. Meanwhile, Crater is raising flower prices next month and so I will have to either find a new supplier or figure a way to boost sales or else what little profits I'm making now will dry up. I may have to give up and sell the place in a few months if things don't improve. If this continues, I won't have enough save to go visit Mum in the spring. Perhaps I should sell the place and move back in with her. She loves my current buns, even if no one else does. Mummy loves my current buns. 3,700. Alright, so far, bookshelf. Broom. Fireplace with nothing in it. Doesn't look like anything else up here. Maybe we'll have more trouble making this loot gold than I thought. Alright, oh, right. we didn't kill ourselves with this ladder. Shut the door in case any passing guards are inquisitive. And this, I believe, is where we started the mission. Yes. So we've been to there, that's a harder question. Okay. So Lady, what's her name's luxury apartments? I could hear somebody inside. Ah, oh, there's a door. I guess trying the door makes some kind of sense. Really, I should go meet with our contact before worrying about loot, but I'm here right now, so, you know, I'll just do it in this. No point waiting around. Hello? Guards! Thief! Don't- I'll Take that key. I'll also relocate you to a less visible location. It probably doesn't matter, I can't hear any guards in here. Clothing designs. Fancy pictures. What's this? Yarn? Over here. More clothing designs. No money. Where's the money? Oh, it's luxury apparel, not luxury apartments. Okay, that makes more sense. Why would, you have, why would you have all these clothing designs in luxury apartments? I don't know. Private versus behind the counter. Money box. That's locked. Oh, wait, I got the key. I just picked up a key. Not that one. That was Linda's key. That's not the right key, okay. I can pick the lock. Money and a book. Alright, just a sales pleasure. Not, thankfully, not another overly long diary. Why is it just lights? Okay. What's in the private room? I guess that's where I need the key for. Nope. It's not locked. Yeah, it's an upstairs. More dressmaker's dolls. Ah, a lot of diary. January 4th, Andrea came in her fo for her final fitting today. The dress looked wonderful on her. The pale green lights up her eyes, and the darker green emphasizes the red highlights in her hair. She even remembered to wear the correct corset this time. January 6th, Ladies B and R came in. Truly, they could not have looked more different. Lady B wore a hideous red and black dress that hung on her like a sack. It was tied tightly around to provide some shape, but it helps immensely if there's actually some shape under it. Lady R has obviously been hitting the wine too hard. If she sneezes, she's going to pop out of that dress like an overripe fruit. Disgusting. Fortunately, they were only window shopping. I really hope no one saw them come in here. January 7th. Lady B returned. It seems she has been suffering from some kind of illness and was looking for something to give her shape some shape. We began with the padded chemise and petticoat. Next, we added the corset for the support and the bustle. Not too big, but definitely there. With this proper foundation in place, we were able to find three styles of dress that worked well on her. The bodices on two of them have ruching to increase the dimensions in the correct areas, and the skirts have several ruffles on them to balance the proportions. 
The third dress has additional lace on top to provide fluffiness and should be worn with a bolero jacket. She was quite pleased and will return in a few days for the second fitting. I only hope she doesn't lose more weight in the meantime. Ninth. Lady Hortense came in to be fitted for her spring wardrobe. As usual, she wants a variety of colours, no grey for her. She chose green overskirts over peach underskirts, then matched the jacket to the overskirt. She also wanted dark ruby red over ivory and midnight blue over mint green. In addition, she wanted plum purple over dark forest green and a couple of lighter coloured dresses for when the weather warms up. Pale lemon with hints of rose and peach and pale lavender over ivory patterned with turquoise blue. It is going to be a busy time getting all of this sewn up for her, but the results will be worth it. I will just have to pay the girls a little extra to stay later than usual. January 10th. What a day! Marie Claire Vogue named my shop the best fashion in town. She's going to send her daughter Elle here for all her dress work. This is amazing. I can double my custom on the rumour alone. Plus, they have inside knowledge of the other fashion houses. I can make some discreet inquiries during Elle's fittings. January 11th. Lady B returned for her second fitting. She still looks like a stick, but she is well but she is a well-padded stick with shape. I only wish I could convince her that everything she wears doesn't have to be red or black. There are other colours in the spectrum. Enjoy them. Twelfth, Lady Fairbanks brought her daughter with her today. She's growing up so fast. A set of three dresses will make her look a proper lady. Grey over white to start with. The grey will enhance her eyes, and she is so pure the white is a natural second choice. Pale yellow under dark blue for the second set, and the third is lavender under a darker plum. Apart from that, she will need just a trainer corset and a couple of extra ivory petticoats. January 13th. Lady Hortense returned for her second fitting. It took all day. The girls were complaining later about the knees because of all the different hemlines. I don't know what they are complaining about. They got paid well and will be scrubbing floors all day otherwise. One piece of art done and there's about a dozen to go. Ooh, very purple light. <sighs> Nothing hiding on there. Nothing hiding around there. Well, there's one of the dresses, I guess. What's upstairs? You look creepy. That statue looks very unstatue like. Like it's looking at me. <coughs> Sounds like a statue there. Alright. There's another room. More dress patterns. Surprisingly little ambience in here in terms of the sound. It's just the outdoor wind. There comes the music. Wow, oh, this is a big, big room. Oh, some valuable ugly masks. A clock that is not valuable. A necklace that is. We're on 4300. Is that plate valuable? Indeed. More lamps. They, they like their lamps in this game, in this uh, mod. not at home? I guess not. Oh, this is a big place. Alright, she has a bathroom. With loot! And a healing potion! That is a healing potion, isn't it? Don't tell me that's something that is in the shape of a healing potion, but not a healing potion. Oh, damn it. It is. Alright, nothing else, uh... Of interest in the bathroom. What's this book? My business has never been so strong. Not only are sales of my clothing up, thanks to referrals, I've been doing more design and creation of custom dresses than ever before. Adding services to my offerings was a brilliant idea. I need to give Mallory a raise just for suggesting it. Well, nothing... I have, a, I have a key that I have not got a lock for. More yarn. Oh, that is not loot. That is, I guess. 4,500. So what? Unless I, unless I actually used it. I can't remember using Linda's key. And this is Linda's place. So I would have thought she'd have something locked. That's just like a window, isn't it? It's not supposed to be... It's not, not a lock. <laughs> it's not open. No... Cupboards there. No cupboards there that open. Nothing. Nothing behind the painting, right? No secret switches I can see. Um. But I have a key, and every key needs a lock to match. Otherwise, what's the point of it? 
That wasn't locked. It's just firewood. Oops. It's just a waiting room or something. Unless there's a secret in, in the bookshelves, but uh, these books look very flat. Huh. Did I miss something down here? No safes, no doors. Nothing there. And again, that wasn't locked, was it? Or at least the key didn't open it. I don't know, I'm bewildered. I'm going to assume, for now, that I have found... Maybe the Linda's key was just for her front door, I don't know. That's possible. That's quite possible. I assume for the moment I found all the loot from Linda's luxury apparel. We've got here a basement. Oh, a very noisy door. Where does this go? I'm looking... what direction? Yeah. It's a compass. Looking north. Uh, from oh, to the artist studio. All right. What I'm going to do? I'm going to stop again because it's been long enough for another episode. And I'll come back through that door. What I'll do in the next episode is I'll go find my way into the pub where we have to hand in the Miller's notes that we found. And then after that, I'll finish up the mission by collecting loot. But for now, uh, I'm going to take another short break. I'll probably stop the stream and start it up again, because uh, it'll probably be a bit longer. I need to walk around a bit. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.